I printed out the QST article uh, February 2018 that shows uh, in this view a 10 megahertz and 5 megahertz receiver and the intention is to use, at least that's the intention of the article, that is, is to hook the TRF receiver to a 50 ohm termination in channel 1 input to the oscilloscope. While you have a either a, some frequency source into the channel 2 and you would adjust this frequency source until it exactly matched this which means if this was a 10 megahertz receiver this would have to be a 10 megahertz signal or if you had the 5 megahertz receiver this would be a 5 megahertz unless you tried to match them 2 to 1 3 to 1 which would mean you this oscillator would have to be multiple or a sub-multiple of whatever frequency you were receiving. This is a view of how he, the designer, intended to work. A receiver, uh, in this picture here is the 10 megahertz, a pre-amplifier, which I have a problem with that name as I said I think it's a post amplifier anyway it's an amplifier and then a frequency counter and a oscilloscope and we have a schematic this schematic is generic it's any of the receivers because later on or at least if you visit the link below, uh, you'll see where he makes two of these receivers for the 3.333 megahertz. I don't know exactly what it is. Canada has two standardized frequency transmitters. I believe they broadcast the time signal very similar to RWWV. So that schematic works for any of them, or any, any other fixed receiver you might want to look at. And this parts list is then broken down into common parts and 5 and 10 megahertz parts. Schematic continues here, and this is the amplifier. Parts list continues here with the 5 megahertz parts and the parts for the amplifier here and here. I said earlier I bought two sets of identical boards from far circuits. Here are the amplifier boards, front and rear. And here's the receiver board, front and rear. All the parts are indicated very clearly. Not in parts value, but their parts call out. In the link below, the one down there, you'll see a bill of material that I've created using his information. So they could write on it. without marking up the original. So I believe I've accumulated all the small parts for both boards. I'm going to go ahead and, and do the 10 megahertz receiver. I can barely detect a 10 megahertz signal at this location. I'm not sure it's worth building a 5. I have enough for both receivers and two preamplifiers or post amplifiers. The first thing I'm going to do is enlarge the holes for C6 which is a variable capacitor. And this is the exact component called for 
in the QST article. I enlarged these holes with a 564 bit and a little bit of work fits pretty good. As I do a lot of times when I'm making through hole kits, assembling through through hole components, I put these four QRP me blocks on that allows the leads to go through unimpeded, so they can turn it over and uh, find the leads. Now these are available for a place called. QRP me. I had a, a viewer question me about the availability of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and populate the board. So here's all the components except for the transformers mounted on the 10 megahertz board. There's a couple of extra holes. There's one here and one here. Here. There aren't don't appear to be used. And on the 10 megahertz board, C17 is not used. Next to the C5 marking is a hole that carries the wire up here to ground these crystal shields. And next to the C15 marking, just down from the C13, there's a hole intended for the same purpose over here. If you watch the pictures very closely, you can see uh, C-17 is not used. I don't know what this is. Does, this hole doesn't appear on my board. This hole does, and this hole does. Actually, I guess you could use this hole for a, a ground for the crystals. So the only thing left to do on this board is to plug the integrated circuit in and complete these two transformers. This is the 10 megahertz board, I believe, completed. Uh, I've added the coils. I did use green wire for the lesser number of turns. Uh, I guess we should look at this circuit. So T3 is not used on the 10 megahertz uh, board. So the RF input is connected to C1 which is this little fellow here. Now I used, because I, I couldn't get any 36 picofarad MLCC type capacitors. I used uh, silver mica here, 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 and here. So the input is there's some capacitors, two 10 megahertz crystals, which are these, and two more capacitors, which are these. Then the transformer, which is eight turns by 35 turns. So in this transformer I use the green wire for 8 turns and the enamel colored wire for 35 turns. Then we have a uh, tuning capacitor of some sort and that's this. A coupling capacitor, a pair of back-to-back -back diodes and into the uh, operational amplifier. And that is a uh, MC1350P. We come out of the operational amplifier. Now we have a 30 turn by 8 turn transformer. That's this one. And the The 
was checking my wiring there. The 8 turn, which is down here, goes into C11, which, change the page here, is another crystal filter exactly the same on the output. Two capacitors here, two crystals here, followed by two capacitors. T4 is non-existent, and this is the RF output. Other than enlarging these three holes, I had absolutely no problem building this. It's very straightforward. Since we're not using any small devices, I was able to solder this with no problem, even though there's not a solder mask. Before we look at the amplifier or the receiver characteristics, let me show you what happened when I got my 10 megahertz crystals out. I found four of them that looked like this. Uh, right now I have the tracking generator feeding through a crystal to the input of the signal analyzer, spectrum analyzer. And I used four of these crystals which are centered exactly on 10 megahertz. Oops. The peak is exactly as close as this machine can read it to 10 megahertz. I removed the crystals of the crystal and I've connected the output of the tracking generator to the input of the spectrum analyzer and it's creating a minus 20 dB or it says here minus 22 dB signal. I'm going to place a 60 decibel attenuator on the output of the tracking generator. Here's the output of the 60 decibel attenuator which is 83 minus 83 dB. 82, 82 dB. I'm going to take the output of the attenuator that is this signal and place it into the RF amplifier. And you see we've got this peak. Let me turn the power to the amplifier off once. See it? Signal went away. Turn it back on. Signal comes back, but it's not at 10 megahertz. 10 megahertz is right here. Let me change the span of the generator, which is right now 114 kilohertz. Take that down to say 10 kilohertz. Okay, the marker is still at 10 megahertz. The peak is at 10.003 megahertz. I'm afraid that's too far away from 10 megahertz set the marker at 10 see it dropping down the rising slope there So right, right there is 10 megahertz. So our, our bandpass needs shifted down. Well, the only thing that's tunable on this board is this, the uh, C6 trimmer. And that merely varies the gain, apparently. I don't see it changing the resonant frequency. and I'm, I'm, I'm moving it a little bit. See, I can change the shape, but I can't get 10 megahertz in the band pass. I'm going to have to change crystals. I probably will go to Mauser Electronics and buy the crystals recommended in the article. 
if we turn C6 to get an optimum signal, and it's a one second sweep. Remember, we're putting in minus 80 decibels, and we have an output of minus 40 decibels. Uh, we'll go to peak here. There we go. Minus 43 dB. So the amplifier does give us 40 dB of gain.